Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily conversation, daily interaction, daily chat. Um, episode number 547. And the topic today is uh, stop, stop, does it spewing? I think I said stop spewing your shit over your new, your, stop spewing your old shit over your new partner. And that was intentional to say old and new because this is going to break it down pretty simply. Um, and it's following up from a series of talks I've done this week that have been on the same thematic for a while. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. And as you can tell, my cold is getting a little bit lighter. I'm not quite so stuffy as I was yesterday. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last almost two years, it's, it was roughly December when I started, and I ramped up early last year into doing daily broadcasts. I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Actually, Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, as most of my audience are women. And this seems to resonate for them. And this topic is actually for both genders. Um, it's not specific just to women, um, because men carry this around just as much as women do. So the topic today, and this again is episode number 547, Facebook Live first, then onto YouTube, then onto podcast. I'll give the links to those later on in case you're listening or watching some other way. This is on Facebook Live first. So, stop spewing, or stop, I think I said stop spewing. I keep thinking, I may say use another term, but I'm going to use that term anyway. Stop spewing your old shit on your new partner because um, you keep doing it. <laughs> if you're anything like me and anything like most people who have done this, but I've gotten over the habit now, thankfully. We have this bad habit of running autopilot stuff on our partners. And I've talked about other ways at different angles about bracket of history around. But this is another way we do it. So I'm really sort of giving Shani a light different like more specifically into one area that many people, many people, um are ignorant of, forget about, are unconscious of, or ignore. Or think it's okay. It's one of the above. So you're in a new relationship. And you're carrying around prejudices. Hi, Belinda. Nice to meet you in broadcast. Um, you're carrying prejudices against your new boyfriend, if you're a woman, or a new girlfriend, if you're a man, or if you're straight or gay, whatever it is. Let me, let me start again with this when we're saying it. When you're with your partner, let's keep it clean that way, so it doesn't matter what gender preference you have, you'll be covered in this. And you're carrying around an agenda on your partner, or a, um, well, let's do this, do this way. <laughs> If you've been to someone like I like I had been in the past, and other people have, I know for sure, have a judgment against your partner for something they haven't done. Yes, say that one again. You have a judgment against your partner, your new partner, about something they have not done. Actually, no, say it another way because it can mean something else. You have a judgment against your partner for something they never did, and it's not like you're judging because they didn't do something you wanted them to do. It's you're blaming them for something they haven't done. This is what people do in relationships often because they're carrying around this old, old baggage from past relationships where they're expecting their partners to do the same thing the past partners did, you know? And that's, that's the thing that makes it so interesting because it's like the innocence of being punished <laughs> in a way, because you are somebody who is, um, if you're on the receiving end of this, because you'd never do this yourself, of course, you're being a victim of somebody else's judgments about something you never did. It's like, well, excuse me, what did I do? I didn't do anything. But because you're, you're in the role with that person, and I'm going to use the victim position for now, but I'll come back to the other side so you know that you might be on the other side of this. When you're in the victim role of this, the, the persecuted role, because you don't want to play victim anyway, it might feel a bit unfair that you're being judged and blamed for something that you really realize isn't, isn't you, but somebody else, like past relationship. This is what happens. And so number, let's switch to the other side again to be the one who's the um, protagonist in this conversation. When you notice, because it does happen occasionally, that you're starting to build up resentments, judgments, blame, upsets, other negative stuff on your current partner when they actually never did anything wrong. If you did this, and it's quite likely you have done this at some point, nine times out of ten, actually 99.9% .9 of the time, just to be really exact, <laughs> you're actually carrying around old crap from a past relationship and applying it to the new person. It's like taking the paint from the old paint, 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 the old paintbrush, sorry, paintbrush from the old paint, that's the right way of saying it, about a relationship and painting a new partner with it. 
it's messy, it's inappropriate, and the colour sucks. <laughs> Let's use that analogy one more time. The thing that we forget about is that every relationship is a clean, new sheet of paper, so to speak. Anything's possible, except for one thing. Who you are in that relationship is the same person who was, in the, who was, who was before the relationship. The relationship is new, but what you bring into it is yourself. You have a choice, if you're aware of it, because most people aren't aware of this. The choice you have is, are you willing to leave all your stuff behind when you go into a new relationship, or you can drag it with you without realizing it? Because the thing about this stuff is this shit, let's talk about this stuff, this baggage, this, what I call it, untalked. I've done a bunch of talks this week that are really into the same topic. This stuff that you carry around with you is so um, familiar and comfortable and part of who you are that it's not, it's not always a way that you can even remove it. In fact, you may be carrying around this sense of like, oh, I'm just going to be, um, I'll be fine without it. I won't worry about it. It's going to go away on its own. It's like, uh, yes and no, maybe not. So what I want to make sure you get this, this point, not to scare you out of relationships, by the way, but to realize that if you are aware enough, aware enough at the beginning of the relationship, to realize that there's stuff you're carrying around that you don't want to inflict your new partner with, that's a brave and wise choice, by the way. Then the next step is do what it takes to remove that from your um, autopilot, as it, so to speak. Because the thing is, this 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 crap that you carry around, this stuff you carry around, this old belief systems. I'm using a lot of different terms from insult, from negative to declarations of neutrality on it, because it is stuff we all carry around. We carry our memories around. Uh, generally in negative histories from past relationships. And yes, in my talks, I've talked about how if you track that back, you'll generally find that it start the original, um, not the original sin, but the original, the original implicate instigation of that behavior started when you were very young and you just simply propagated down to be in all your current relationships as an adult. But the thing is, you've also accumulated baggage, upsets, hurt feelings, woundings, heartbreak, etc. as your relationships go through and you don't always do the work to clear them out before you get to the next relationship. Because people don't get taught that. That's not, that's not a high school class or an adulting class or a class you t you're not learning that as a kid from your parents. Because we don't teach this as part of life. It's not the way it works. So the, the earnest, I'm trying to figure out which go. Oh, hang on a second. I'm just, I'm just seeing a fork in the road as a word to speak. Which way I want to go? Okay, I'm not going to reiterate the point, but we regard that one. So here's the thing. You have the ability to change your course in this very moment. It does often require, first of all, an awareness, becoming conscious of what is going on. And I use the, the conscious-unconscious model before, so if you haven't seen that, I'll talk about a previous broadcast. But basically, the idea being is that it's hard to do something when you're not conscious of what it is. It's, sorry, it's hard to be aware of something unless you're conscious of what it is. So the first step is to become conscious of it, conscious of it, see something different. So how to become conscious of this? Before you get to the next relationship, be aware of what judgments are running around just below the surface. And if you're really tuning in clearly, you'll be able to hear and feel and recognize these. And what you believe this new partner will bring, what they would do, what they will say, how they'll interact, how you'll feel, all these different things. We have a tendency as human beings to actually create a scenario for every single instance of that person before we even sit down with them, before we get to bed with them, before we go on dates with them. We'll presume all these things about them because that's the way we've experienced past relationships. That's basically, um, well, it's House of Cards, but that's, that's been hijacked as a TV show name, but it's basically a, a weak structure, I'll put it that way. And so by doing that, you're putting a lot of rules onto your new relationship that aren't really meant to be there because your new partner isn't the same as your last partner or the one before that. Except if you start drawing in a partner that repeats the same patterns because you're attracting that because that's what you want. So this is a, this is a, um, like a dovetailing pattern as it were, like these are enmeshed, enmeshed agreements between what you're intending consciously and what you're actually creating subconsciously and then what you're drawing in. And the truth is the conscious and subconscious fit together but they also conflict with each other because what you consciously want and what you subconsciously want are probably not the same thing. Again, talks about this previous broadcast about the history that you drag, you drag away from childhood 
is the subconscious wiring that basically draws to you relationships that mirror the patterns you had when you were a kid or that your parents did when you were a kid. You're still doing that as an adult that should do some work. So in simple terms, what I'm attempting to articulate is that your, um, let me say this, your opportunity before you go into the next relationship, especially then, if you're in one now and you want to change where it is, there's a possibility for that too. But before you get to the next relationship, take time before you go on the next date to really get clear about where you stand with yourself. Because the relationship you have with yourself is what's impacting every relationship. That's by the way, it's one of those big truisms. Because it's bringing you into the relationship with those person through the lens of who you are. And until you clean up that self-reflection, that self-image, that self-relationship, it's going to keep getting muddy out there with the other relationships. The one that's closest to you is the one that's most important, is the one with yourself. So you've got to do the work to do that. You've got to do the work to do that. You've got to do the work to change that, to clean it up, to transform it, so you actually become a more, one more aligned, more integrated, and more transparent person. So when you go into a relationship, you come in like, oh, this is great, a new place to play. Free, clear, un... Um, like a, a fresh sheet of paper. There's no markings on it, there's no written stuff, nothing's on it yet, you can do whatever you want. And that is the best way to be in a relationship because you can explore from the get-go something new. Two things I'm gonna mention, of course, I'm gonna offer some services in this, in this talk, is that to really get clear about what you're still doing from the past often requires having, you're welcome, Susan, um, often requires getting some help, direct guidance. And for many out there, they don't know where to start. But if you're watching my videos, you know that I offer quite often two things, one of which is my discovery session and my self-love practice, both of which would apply in this case. So if this is hitting on anything for you, if you're going, oh yeah, I know this one, or yes, I feel this, or yes, or no, I don't want to feel it at all, it's definitely the right time to reach out for support. I say it's the right time because right now I'm offering some special holiday specials in my coaching because at the end of the year and it's getting close to the holidays and right now is a, is a time for a lot of people where a lot of the upsets come up and history comes up and baggage comes up. And this can be something that I would definitely say can help you. But it won't last, won't last forever. I've only got a few slots left in my coaching arrangements for the next few weeks. And if you want to grab one of the spots, you need to reach out to me. And I'll put the link in the comments so you can find out how, about, how to do that. The second thing is the self-love practice. Because this time of year, especially for a lot of people, they're so busy with your, maybe you, are so busy focusing outwardly for the holidays that you neglect yourself. And as I mentioned it's the relationship with yourself that comes first because it's the closest one to you before everybody else. But if you don't know how to love yourself and don't spend the time to focus on loving yourself and taking time to love yourself, I'm taking in my point, then it's going to be really hard to stay tuned and stay in that place and you end up draining yourself. I know in some ways um, this head cold that went on for the last few days was probably, called, probably caused by me not taking care of myself to the level I could have done. So we get signs. We get... Um, indicators when things aren't of alignment. So if you're noticing for yourself where things aren't working the way you want, it's probably you're not taking care of yourself the right way. So my self-love practice that I recommend, I'll put the link in the comments for that, is a very, very simple practice. It's a very easy guided meditation you can do morning and the evening that if you do that for 30 days, will transform your life. And frankly, 30 days will take you to the end of the year. So if you're going to start 2019 the right way, I highly recommend starting with that. Actually, I'd start, I'd start, I'd highly recommend you finish 2018 with that. Just start 2019, a whole new place. I've got a whole lot of new stuff brewing for next year, by the way. That's already coming up recently. Just uh, going to be offering that soon. But by now, what I'm offering is clear. So my, my invitation to you for yourself as your homework to do as you wish. If you're single right now, is look at what your, what your agenda is for your next relationship. What is it they must do or that you think they're going to do? or that you want them to do that you don't even tell them about. Because those um, very, as I say, very very much written ballpoint pen that you write down by default, those things will get in the way of a relationship if you don't allow some freedom. And yes, there are intentions to have. Let me just get inside by for a second. Having clear intentions about a relationship you want to have that's going to be boy is uplifting, is joyful, and everything else is great. But it's the ones you have the intention where you don't want to have that thing again. You know, you don't want to have a thing where he's going to cheat on you again or she's going to lie to you or whatever that is. Those are the ones that are going to be in the way. So focus on where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. That's a big key, by the way, too. And secondly, get the help that will get you on track 
so you don't want to carry on that stuff anymore. It sounds so simple, and in some ways it is, if you take the steps. So I think you got my point by now. So again, this is my daily Facebook Live. Um, goes out every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless it changes for some reason. Um, and so this one will be available on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, and also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, which I invite you to subscribe to. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, where all of my broadcasts are listed from newest to oldest. And then eventually onto my podcast, which also you can subscribe to, which is Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and you can download the audio so you listen to them anytime you want to wherever you're going um, when you can't look at the screen on your phone or wherever you're doing. So I think I've given enough to think about, to ponder, to consider. Um, yeah. It's no fun when you start dumping your shit on your new partner when it's not their responsibility. And equally, it's no fun being dumped on by a new partner because they think you should be something you're not. So if you're in a relationship like that, you might think about getting out. That's on another topic. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. If you have any thoughts, questions, please put them below and I'll, I'll respond after I sign off. If you want to share with your friends, please do that as well. And I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care. Bye.